the actual calculations uh, it seems like uh, many people have trouble doing the calculations so uh, let me do three questions and for this video I'll only do finding the critical numbers I will not uh, try to identify the critical number as a relative max or minimum uh, because uh, really the problem is the calculation all right so here's our first question uh, what would be the critical number for critical points for this well what's a critical point it's the point where the gradient of f is equal to zero as a vector and in our case because uh, this, this is two dimensional two variables gradient of f is defined as f differentiated by x and f differentiated by y so let's calculate that f differentiated by x means you're differentiating this function as a function of x and you're treating y as a constant so even though cosine 3y looks like a function this is just a, a, a number okay uh, you have to treat it like a constant so uh, any constants you can just bring it outside it doesn't do anything constant multiples can be brought outside and all you have to do is differentiate e to the negative x and here you just need the chain rule which is that you have to uh, differentiate e to the this uh, outside function which which doesn't change exponential functions don't change right and then uh, you have to pull the minus x outside and differentiate so negative x prime gives you negative 1 therefore you have negative 1 e to the negative x cosine of 3y okay and then uh, what about f of y this is uh, uh, you, you're differentiating with respect to y of e to the negative x cosine 3y and this time because you're treating y as the variable and x as a constant this time e to the negative x is treated as a constant so you can bring it outside because it's a constant multiple constant multiples can be brought outside and then you differentiate cosine 3y which differentiates the negative sign and uh, the chain rule says this 3y must be brought outside and you differentiate it which gives you 3 so that's going to give you negative 3 uh, e to the negative x sine 3y okay so what are we looking for we're looking for the place where this is equal to zero so i want each of these to be equal to zero so let me change the color let's say this is equal to zero i need this to be zero for that to equal to zero since exponential functions are never zero uh, the only way i can have is cosine of 3y should be zero and also for this to be zero you need the sine sine of 3y to be zero okay well uh, that's a problem because for this to happen we need that the 3y to be uh, must be uh, 90 degrees or 270 degrees right those are the places where cosine is zero and here uh, 3y must be uh, zero degrees or 180 degrees right so uh, there's no angle or, or, or uh, you could also add <clears throat> any multiple of 360 because you can have some coterminal angles so but anyways uh, as you can see there's no way that 3y can be both 90 degrees or 270 and also be 0 degrees or 180 so since both cannot be satisfied in this case no critical points exist. Okay, so that's that's uh, yeah. So sometimes you might have a function which doesn't have a critical number, critical point. All right, let's go to the second example. Um, so we again proceed to differentiate by x, which means e to anything you differentiate it's the same thing and then you have to bring the inside function out this is the nested function 
you have to differentiate. And this time, this derivative right here means really differentiate by x, treating y as a constant. So this negative y squared uh, is not multiplied to anything. It's a constant by itself. So it's uh, four, negative y squared and 4y are constant terms. Constant terms give you 0 when you differentiate. And you only have to differentiate these two. These other ones go to 0, and you get negative 2x and then minus 2 of e to the negative x squared minus y squared minus 2x plus 4y. So that's our fx. What about fy? It's the same story, but this time when you differentiate, you're differentiating by y. So that this prime right here means it's differentiating by y, right? So that gives you, uh, you're treating now x as constant, so these two just become 0. And then you just have uh, negative y squared, oh, y squared differentiates to 2y, so it's negative 2y, and then plus 4. Then e to the negative x squared minus y squared minus 2x plus 4y. And then, uh, so those are the, the x and y derivatives. So what, uh, I need these to be 0. That's what I'm looking for. Again, exponential functions are never 0. So I need negative 2x minus 2 to be 0. And I also need negative 2y plus 4 to be 0. Well, this is 0 when negative 2x is positive 2. So x must be negative 1. And this one is 0 when you have uh, negative 2y equals to negative 4. So y must be positive 2. And putting these two together, I see that negative 1 comma 2 is a critical number, a critical point. I keep saying number. OK. Let's go to this next example, fx. Uh, you're treating this as a function of x. So this is just a constant multiple. And you're just differentiating this much only which gives you 4 minus 2x. OK, and then fy would be, uh, this time, 4x minus x squared is considered as a constant. And you're just differentiating this part, which gives you 8 minus 2y. OK, now it gets really interesting, because for these to be 0 and 0, you have to keep track of many different cases. And this is why the calculation becomes really challenging. So if the first two examples seemed not much of a challenge, this, next, this, this problem here will finally look quite challenging. So let's, let's track this. So how does this work? You have, uh, first, you need 8y minus y squared times 4 minus 2x equal to 0. Now, when two things multiply to 0, you, you have either one of them to be 0, right? And this one uh, further, can further be factored by factoring out the y. So you have y equals to 8 and 0. Here, I have x equals to 2. OK, so you have like three different cases. y could be 8, y could be 0, x could be 2. And uh, the tricky part is to track down all the possibilities. So we have case 1, case 2, case 3. We have to track down all the possibilities. First, y could be 8, or y could be 0, or y could, x could be 2. Now let's look for this. If y is 8, then what does that mean for f of y? Uh, f of y, when you have uh, x and if y is 8 that means you get 4x minus x squared and y is 8 8 times 2 is 16 8 minus 16 is negative 8 that has to equal to 0 which means you get uh, 4x minus x squared must be 0 and then that factors as x times 4 minus x equal to 0 so you get x equal to 0 or 4 okay so this first case gave us two points First, it could be 8, comma, 0, or 8, comma, 4. 
that's the answer. Okay, now y equals to zero. What happens then? Now if y is zero, f y and y is zero, you get oh, it's the same same story. Uh, this time, if you plug in zero here, you get eight minus zero, so it's just eight. So that has to be zero, and then again, you get the same equation. This has to be zero in order for this to be zero. So you get zero comma zero or zero comma four. Finally, when x equals to 2, uh, fy of, uh, now x is 2, and we don't know what the y value is, so if you plug that in, then uh, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 squared is 4, times 8 minus 2y, so for this to equal to 0, you are forced to have 8 minus 2y to be 0, because this is 4, it can't be 0, so this has to be 0. So that gives you y equals to 4. So you have 2 comma 4, because x is 2 and y is 4. So you have total of how many? You have total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 critical numbers. And uh, uh, if the question is asking you to test uh, for each point, whether it's a saddle point or relative max or relative min, uh, you have to work with all these five points, so it's, uh, it's going to be a very time-consuming question if you are trying to do that.